Man, The Suicide Squad was an awesome movie, right? I might even talk about it soon. But for now, it's something even better. Birds of Prey is the 2020 film starring Margot Robbie, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Rosie Perez, and Ewan McGregor. Based on the DC comic of the same name, it actually has very little in common with most versions of the titular team. That doesn't matter though because the movie does its own thing and is frankly better for it. The movie follows Robbie's Harley Quinn, recently broken up with her more psychotic half. Another point in the film's favor is that this is as much of Jared Leto's Joker that we see. It's the perfect amount. Well, actually none would be the perfect amount, but I'll take what I can get. Now hunted by the various people she's crossed over the years, she takes a job to retrieve a valuable diamond that's been swallowed by a prepubescent Batgirl. No, not that one. No, not that one either. Yeah, the one with the coolest outfit. This sets her on a path that intersects with dogged detective Renee Montoya, nightclub singer Dinah Lance, and the deadly vigilante known as the Crossbow Killer. They call me. It's Huntress. She calls herself Huntress. They are hounded by Ronan Sionis, AKA Black Mask, and his boyfriend slash enabler, Victor Zaz. Eventually everyone fights in an abandoned theme park. Some of my best performing videos on this channel are ones where I've bashed the DCEU pretty hard. So in the spirit of fairness, I decided to take some time to praise one of its best works. Let's start with a little background. Birds of Prey exists because of Margot Robbie and her genuine passion and love for the character of Harley Quinn. Don't mistake this movie for a vanity project though. This is no Black Adam, it's actually the opposite. Robbie refused a solo project, feeling that any Harley Quinn film should be an ensemble. In her words, Harley should always have friends. Kathy Ann was eventually chosen to direct, making her the first Asian woman to direct a superhero film in 2020. That seems late. The movie was released in February 2020 and quite frankly bombed. That was super embarrassing. There were a lot of factors involved, but it's pretty easy to lay a lot of the blame on the poor reception of Ayer's Suicide Squad. If the DCEU contains a genuine cult hit, this is it. Birds of Prey has mostly earned high marks among critics, and the bulk of the genuine criticism seems to be on the differences from the source material. The movie also had a poor marketing campaign, seemingly changing titles at random in a move right out of Edge of Tomorrow's playbook. Or is it Live, Die, Repeat, Edge of Tomorrow? Or is it Edge of Tomorrow, Live, Die, Repeat? Or is it Tom Cruise Space Movie? Number two. I love that movie though, not gonna bash it. Edge of Tomorrow, amazing. So what makes this movie so great? Let's take a closer look. Spoiler warnings follow, skip to this time code to avoid. That's if you wanna go into this movie fresh, if that's even still possible. Let's start with the Birds of Prey themselves. While the marketing tried to put Harley front and center, it's as much their film. Besides Harley, the most amount of screen time is given to Journey Smollett as Dinah Lance, aka Black Canary. If you know anything about the songbird, you know that she has a voice that can shatter bone. So it's actually admirable that the film makes this the least important aspect of her character. Instead, she gets the most traditional superhero arc in the film. She starts out working for Ronan as a singer and driver. It's eventually revealed in conversation that her mother was a superhero who died tragically, which is why she's become so jaded and is only looking out for herself. She is confronted several times with situations where women are being assaulted, and at first she always chooses to look away until her better self forces her into a protector role. Journey Smollett is terrific, and out of all of the characters in this movie, her Black Canary most deserves to be seen again. Rosie Perez also has her share of screen time as Renee Montoya. It's great seeing the GCPD detective make her big screen debut next to Harley, as both characters were originally invented for Batman the Animated Series. Perez plays Montoya as the sarcastic older cop, who has grown more and more bitter at her achievements being credited to lesser male co-workers. She is a bit of a cop cliche, but Harley hangs a lampshade on it with several really funny jokes. If you've ever watched any cop movie ever, you know that this is when shit gets real. No cop ever gets anything done until after they've been suspended. 
Finally, there's Winstead as the crossbow kill- I'm not the crossbow killer! Oh, okay. Okay, I mean the Huntress. When it comes to the Batman canon, Huntress is a pretty important figure. As in the film, she was raised by assassins and often butts heads with Batman due to her more violent impulses. Winstead plays the character as someone who was, well, raised by assassins. In that she has great bow skills, but not so great social skills. Outside of her quest for revenge, she seems the most concerned with appearing badass. This often has the opposite effect, making her look like a dork trying to be a badass. Do you know who I am? Still a work in progress. Do you know who I am? There is a great running joke of her naming herself Huntress, while everyone keeps calling her the crossbow killer, right up to the point when the misnomer fills her with murderous rage. Out of all the birds of prey, Huntress has the most traditional superhero costume. In the film, they tone it down to a purple jacket and some liberal use of eyeshadow, like she's Arrow in the first few seasons of the CW show. At the very end, they give her what looks like Anne Hathaway's old Catwoman goggles. They look pretty terrible though, and I'm glad they only get about three seconds of screen time. Robbie is of course wonderful as Quinn, and this movie is the first time she really gets to shine in the role. Sorry, but in Air's Suicide Squad, she does very little except pine over a man and hit things with a bat. She's given a much larger internal life in Birds of Prey. Now we know she enjoys roller derby, egg sandwiches, and margaritas, drinking excessively, and thinks Bruce Wayne is hunky. Having the movie begin with the end of her relationship with Joker is a smart move. It forces her to confront who she is without her association to the Clown Prince. James Gunn must have been a fan of her arc in this movie, because he continues and builds off it in The Suicide Squad. Birds of Prey took Robbie's Harley from being a sex doll hanger on and turned her into a full-fledged character and even a hero. However, heroes are often only as good as their villains. Thankfully, Birds of Prey has one of the best ones ever. Here comes Roman Sion as he was handed life on a silver spoon. Gin and tonics at five, all of the duck. Ewan McGregor's Black Mask is the single greatest villain in the entire DCEU, period. He is not the most powerful and melodramatic, like the world destroying Zod, or even the biggest player, like Lex or the Devil Man Black Adam fought. His empire seems to extend about as far as a single nightclub. However, every detail about his character reinforces the pure, unadulterated evil that makes up the core of who he is. Plus, he also manages to be so much fun. In one of his earliest scenes, he is annihilating a family, first deciding to spare the young daughter, but then changing his mind because she has some snot on her face. The way that McGregor plays this is amazing. He's not playing with his victim, but genuinely changing his mind at the slightest whim. It's the kind of psychotic impulsiveness that leads to more violent behavior in the film. He also has a sort of mean teenager giddiness to his behavior. One of McGregor's best scenes is when Sionis is showing Dinah around his apartment. He points out all his cool stuff and dismisses thousands of years of history as stupid decorations. Look at his little ears. His little haircut. Uh -huh. yeah, he's a thousand years old and now wow. he's just an ornament in my living room. Ooh. The way he sends Zaz and Canary off also highlights his complex lack of patience. He literally wants things he doesn't have like a child would, practically screaming, mine, 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 mine. Why don't I own the crossbow guy? You should own it. I mean, I like crossbows. He also gets one of the best and most satisfying deaths in cinematic history. It's not just the gore explosion, it's the realization on his face followed by the scream he lets out as he flies through the air. This is the kind of satisfying end to a hateable villain I live for. Let's watch it five more times in a row. The other side of this monstrous couple is Victor Zaz. We got them. This is Zaz at his most codependent. Usually this character is a loner Ted Bundy type who is usually wearing a torn straight jacket or nothing at all. In Birds of Prey, he is the world's worst enabler, constantly getting Black Mask to act on his worst impulses. 
He's like the anti-Tom Hagen. In a brutal scene, he keeps egging on Black Mask while he assaults a club goer in his own business. I also keep calling them boyfriends, and I don't mean that sarcastically. These two are played very queer-coded, especially in their scenes alone. The actors were coy about this interpretation, but it's very clear in both performances, especially in how jealous Zaz gets when Roman talks to any woman he's not actively threatening. Zaz also gets a satisfying end, but one minor flaw in the movie is that we don't ever get Ronan's reaction to his death. There might have been a scene filmed, but it probably would have slowed the pace of the climax. However, it would have been satisfying to see one of two reactions from Black Mask, either enraged and torn apart by the death of his closest relationship, or a cold dismissal that even Zaz's death means nothing to this sociopath. Either way, it's a real missed opportunity. As it stands, I don't even know if Ronan knows Zaz is dead before Ronan himself turns into so much fish chum. Birds of Prey is also a great example of the kind of different perspective a female director can bring to a property like this. Harley Quinn herself is noticeably less sexualized when compared to the Barbie doll way she was treated in Ayer's film. Her outfits are far less revealing and skin tight. Instead of leather pants and t-shirts three sizes too small, she now wears skirts, jeans, and generally clothing she can move in. The camera lingers on her butt and cleavage far less, if at all. She also fights with a pragmatic brutality that doesn't involve her constantly straddling people's faces like she's Black Widow. There's also all the ball kicking. Yes, I'm absolutely serious. I think Birds of Prey contains the most testicle trauma of any comic book movie, at least by volume. The female protagonists of this film have no problem giving any attacker a swift kick to the ghoulies. Please. And in fact, it's their go-to move. And you know what? They're right to. It's a huge weak spot for most cis men, and you should honestly see it more in any fight. Why isn't Batman kicking Deathstroke in the junk? Is he above it on moral grounds? Yeah, he'll throw you neck first into a crate, but at least he won't smash your eggshells. Overall, Birds of Prey is a fun movie filled with the kind of things that are becoming rarer and rarer in superhero movies. Real sets with real stunt work, lower, more relatable stakes that allow the audience to grow invested in the drama, strong characters and performances that go beyond the usually stoic scowlers that infest the DCEU. I even enjoy the non-linearity of the film's first act, mirroring Harley's ADHD-like narration. Birds of Prey may not be a perfect movie, but it's as close to one as the DCEU has ever had. That's why I'm giving it a 5 out of 5. Yes, I know I teased The Suicide Squad, and I will talk about that movie soon. I love Birds of Prey more, however, mostly because of how unique and refreshing it is in a landscape of grey-brown superhero smash-ups. It's just too bad that, with the exception of Harley, we won't see any of these characters again, at least not these versions of them. That's a real shame, as this movie deserved a sequel a lot more than Shazam or even Ayer's Suicide Squad. I'll be back with another review soon, crew members, but until then, stay safe and be who you are.